Good morning. We are still on Daniel 2.21, part 9 of Daniel 2.21. Daniel 2.21 says, He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. The first section, we talked about why we must pray for our leaders. Then, sections 2 through 8, we showed the dynamics of two kings, one that was in power, that came into power, and another that was going to replace him. In number nine, we're going to continue that. As number eight, we talked about King Saul, the second king, killing others because his jealousy and envy and strife went so huge, they killed 80 priests and children and women in the city. In nine, David is still on the run. So, in part nine, David's still on the run. Mind you, he just ran away, him and his 400 men, and he saw a city that was being sieged by the Philistines. He went and fought the Philistines there in that city, and then he found out that Saul was coming after him. He prayed to God. He got an ephod, a, a holy garment, prayed to God, and God said, yes, the people would give him over. So David went into the wilderness, and now you have Saul and David going, circling around the mountain. One's on one side of the mountain, the other's on the other. And then Philistines attacked King Saul, so Saul and his 3,000 men started attacking the Philistines. And now we have to David about to hide in the cave. So when Saul, 1 Samuel 24, when Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men in front of Wild Goat's Rock. And he came to the sheepfolds by the way when there, there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. And the men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seem, shall seem good to you. Then David arose and stealthily cut off a corner of Saul's robe. And afterwards, David's heart struck him because he had cut off a cor corner of Saul's robe. robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord. The Lord's anointed. He's talking about Saul. The Lord's anointed and to put out my hand against him, seeing he is the Lord's anointed. So David persuaded his men with these words and did not permit them to attack Saul. And Saul rose up and left the cave and went on his way. Afterward, David arose and went out of the cave and called after Saul, my Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the earth and paid homage. And David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men who say, Behold, David seeks your heart, harm? Behold, this day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hand in the cave. And some told me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not put out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your robe in my hand, for by the fact that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you, you may know and see that there is no wrong or treason in my hand. I have not sinned against you, though you hurt, hunt me, though you hunt my life to take it. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me against you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the Proverbs of the ancient says, out of the wicked comes wickedness, but my hand shall not be against you. After whom has the king of Israel come out? After whom do you pursue? After a dead dog, after a flea? May the Lord therefore be judge and give you sentence between me and you, and see to it and plead my cause and deliver me from your hand. As soon as David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, where I have repaid you evil. And you have declared this day how you have dealt with me, and that you did not kill me when the Lord put me into your hands. 
For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him go away safe? So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now behold, I know that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Swear to me, therefore, by the Lord, that you will not cut off my offspring after me, and that you will not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David swore to Saul. Then Saul went home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. And they lived happily ever after. No, they did. <laughs> Saul was not done with David. Not at all. Okay. But something important to note right after the next verse in, in chapter 25. Now Samuel died and all Israel assembled and mourned for him. And they buried him in his house at Ramah. We'll get back to that probably tomorrow in tomorrow's next part. But we'll see a chapter even past 25, 1 Samuel 26, 1 and 2. Then the Ziphites came to Saul at Gibeah, saying, Is not David hiding himself on the hill in Hakalah, which is on the east of Jeshimon? So Saul rose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph with 3,000 chosen men of Israel to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. Saul was not done with David. Saul had business. To attend to with David. He still wanted him dead. His jealousy and envy is beyond control. It's out of this world. But if you, whoever I'm speaking to, if you are feeling oppressed, if you are feeling like somebody is trying to hunt you down like a dog, like you're a flea, and, and just squash you for no other reason but for serving the Lord, remember what. Deuteronomy 32, 35 says, Vengeance is mine and recommence for the time when their foot shall slip. Vengeance is the Lord's. This is the Lord speaking. Vengeance is mine and recompense for the time when their foot shall slip. They will make a mistake. The Lord will make sure that they make a mistake. For the day of their calamity is at hand and their doom cometh swiftly. And it comes swiftly when the Lord makes his judgments. When he delivers his vengeance. But what you need to know. Is how Paul saw this. Old Testament writing. Because this is from the song of Moses. Deuteronomy 32-35. But how Paul saw this Old Testament writing. And he really helped us. See exactly what it's saying. If possible. So far as it depends on you. Live peaceably with all. Be hope, beloved. Never avenge yourselves. But leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. He's talking about Deuteronomy 32, 35. I will repay, says the Lord. The Lord will repay. Vengeance is his. He will repay, says the Lord. As far as it's in our control, let's live peaceably with all. As far as it's us, they may, they may want to not live peaceably. But as far as it's in my control, I'm going to live peaceably with with all and do my best to do that so far as it depends on me but before hold on one last thing one last thing I want you to hear a song from Psalms 57 and it is said to be that this song was written or sung in the cave while David was hiding from King Saul. Just listen to this song. It gives so much relief, so much, so much freedom from pain if you feel like you're being oppressed and attacked. Check it out. Be merciful to me, oh God. Be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge in the shadow of your I will take refuge till trouble passes by. Be merciful to me, oh God. Be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge in the shadow. Refuge 
Till travel passes by I cry to you most high To God who fulfills his purpose for me He will send from heaven and save me He will put to shame all those His love, His steadfast love and faithfulness, I lie down among the lions that greedily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues are sharpened swords. Be merciful to me, oh God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge, in the shadow of your wings I will take refuge, till travel passes by. Thank you for, thank you for just this, the wisdom of the Bible, Father. Thank you for letting us see the events that have taken place in history and see how you've been a, a stronghold to those that you have put people in caves, literally put people in caves so that your will be done. And thank you for it, Father, because so many can now be influenced and affected by the troubles that King David had. Thank you for documenting them, Lord. And may many be saved. In Yeshua's name, amen. Goodbye.